Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I love that song. Hey everyone, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. As if you hadn't guessed, we're doing ring mods today. Ring mods. We've I, we've never done the show on ring mods. We've had a couple, we've had a gonculator years and years ago, back in the shed. We had a gonculator on the board, but no, we are going to look at ring mods today. Um, before we get into all of that, thank you for watching this. Please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to That Pedal Show, please do click the button or whatever it is you have to do these days. Um, also head to thatpedalshop.com if you're in the USA and Canada for pedals and stuff. Indeed. And yes. thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed t-shirts and hats and merch and all that stuff. Merch and dice, isn't it? <laughs> merch and dice. Very good. Very so, good. <laughs> we're doing this show because, um, oh, I don't know, is it fair to say, Dan? I was listening to a Wayne Krantz record mm -hmm. a few months ago. And uh, I like Wayne Krantz. If you don't know who Wayne Krantz is, please check him out. Really awesome. Well, don't want to confine him by genre, but I think it would be fair to say jazz and fusion would be two words that you might hear in there. Mm -hmm. But great rock player. Awesome. Uh, Wayne is a, a noted user of the ring mod. And I just don't know anything about ring mods. So we started talking about it. Um, and it's a sound that... So the question, I guess the overarching question is, is can you use this? In any sort of musical context. Or is it just for those eight bars where you want to like really be mad and freaky? So we're going to start off by explaining what a ring modulator is and how it's created. We've got three different ones to look at. And we've got Dougie Fresh in today. Say hello, Dougie. Hello. <laughs> Who's going to uh, play the tubs. Um, either Dan or I will play bass and we'll, we'll just see if we can make music. We'll give it a go. And make some noise. We'll make, some, make some noise. Um, so the three we've got are the Dodd Gonculator, which is relatively cost effective. Mm -hmm. 90s, is it? 2000s, 90s? Yeah, 90s. When, uh, just trying to think. Was it Skunk and Nancy maybe? No, it was Incubus with okay. the song Glass. That was made that pedal very popular for a brief moment. Nice. And this is a reissue thereof. We've got the Randy's Revenge from Fairfield Electronics. And we've got this because when Joey Landreth came in last... He did some crazy things with it using slide guitar and yeah. tuned harmonics, which yeah. is just amazing. Bonkers. And I went on reverb.com and wanted the one that Wayne Krantz used. And one of the ones he used over the years was one of these, apparently. Whether it was or not, I don't know. Uh, quick story. Massive hello and thank you to Neil Cowley. Neil Cowley, the jazz pianist and... Uh, oh, Again, shouldn't really call him jazz. The the pianist and uh, musician extraordinaire, yeah, composer, and uh, who turned up here to sell me the frequency analyzer. So Neil, if you watch this, hello and thank you for the sale. It's an eighties electroharmonics frequency analyzer. Yeah, it's beautiful. Come on then, Dan, lay some knowledge on us. Okay. Um, <laughs> first thing I'm going to do. First thing I'm going to do is going to seem really random, right? But when you're a kid. Did you ever do this? Can I help? That's my biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> right. How does this work? Hello, Michael. Uh, exterminate. I know you want to exterminate me at this point because of the sound of the fan. Uh, but when we were kids, we used to just do this all the time because we were massive Doctor Who fans. Ah! I sincerely hope that worked. I, I do too, <laughs> for the effort that that required. So what, um, I couldn't hear it from where I'm standing. What, uh, what will the good people have been hearing? They would have heard a sound vaguely similar to a Dalek, right? <laughs> so, Ring modulation, and to be honest, that's not ring modulation, but it's similar, right? It's it's a sound that originally was used in telecoms um, to try and get more than one voice down a telephone line. And, a re and then, very soon after that, it became a thing in audio. So I think the first time that people heard uh, Ring Modulator was on the soundtrack to, I think, A Forgotten World, A Forgotten Planet, like a 1950s sci-fi yeah. film. Yeah. And it was such an unusual thing 
And then after that, you know, we uh, BBC Studios used it a lot. It's the sound of the Cybermen, the sound of the Daleks, you know. That's what I immediately associate with it is the, right. ro you know, it's robotic. That's what, it's the robot sound, isn't it? it? It's the robot sound. Yeah. But then it started to be used in music. Uh, if you have listened to Paranoid, the solo Paranoid, Tony Iommi, one side is uh, straight guitar, one side is the ring modulator. And it's sort of, it's contested how he did it. A lot of people think he ran into an old synth because yeah. that was sort of one of the old only things that was available at that time. But as you mentioned, players like Wayne Krantz, Guthrie Govan, um, Joey. Uh, I'm sure Landau must have used one down yep. the years. It's usually uh, Jeff Beck. Jeff Beck. Uh, yep. It's that thing where you go, oh, I'll try Ring Mod and do it on half a record. And... Yeah. <laughs> Mahavishnu Orchestra, another one, um, John McLaughlin. <laughs> nice. Uh, it's been used a bunch of times and... It's challenging. So, it's, it, yeah, to be fair, it is more commonly associated with the synth world. Yeah. Keys, people use it on all kinds of other instruments. With guitar, well, as we're about to find out, as Dan says, it is challenging. Yeah. So the main difference between, so me speaking into the fan is similar to a fast tremolo, right? And it's it's quite different than an actual ring mod. So I've got, I've got a tremolo here that will do really fast mm. and just to show you the difference okay so okay if i so the amps we're using today we've got the uh, deluxe reverb and we've got the plexi going into mixed new 2x12 uh it's not my it's ours it's a jtm45 and it's going into the 2061 212 which we managed to find in a shop in salisbury amazing yeah and and also new today is the uh, bass amp there which is a fender basement 70 from 1979 Okay, so just the two amps by themselves. Now, I'm going to put the tremolo on. Let's get the right sound. This is the Tremotron from Stone Deaf, by the way. So, you'll hear the tremolo, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed it up. Okay. Okay, so, tremolo. So it sounds very ring moddy, okay? The difference between a, a really super fast trim light like that yeah. and an actual ring mod, if we, have, if we go to the frequency analyzer. Yeah. <laughs> If I turn the freaking analyzer off, that's what I was playing, those notes. Yeah. And they were nowhere to be found in the actual ring mod. So the difference is, in a really fast amplitude tremolo, you don't lose the original note. You get all this, you get, you still get the sidebands, you get the, you know, the, technically speaking, you get, uh, it's the sum and difference of the frequency. So um, there's a thing called, the carrier signal, which is the speed of the tremolo, right? Or the, you know, the speed of that sine wave. And then there's the input or the modulator, which is the signal going into it. Mm. And when those uh, frequencies hit... And they're at two different frequencies. So the free, you get the yeah. carrier signal, which is, the, which is the speed of the sine, wa sine wave, and then you get the input or the modulator. They're the two frequencies. Let's just rewind a little bit. What you heard with the tremolo was was essentially a sine wave, right? One wave going up and down. And as you increase the speed of the trem, the wave gets tighter together. Yeah, the frequency becomes higher. And that's why when changing the speed of the tremolo at those very high rates, it tunes. Exactly that. To a note. And you will have heard it go in and out of unison with the note that Dan was playing. Yeah. But the, so... So, so if we imagine... Carry on from there yeah. into the frequency analyzer. If we, if we imagine that that... And the frequency analyzer has the same thing, has a, you know, similar to a sine wave, 
and does the same thing. You tune that pitch by changing that frequency. Yeah. The difference is in a ring mod, there's, a, there's an array of diodes, which basically let uh, at, at certain uh, parts of the waveform, they will conduct or not conduct. And arranged in a ring. Arranged in a ring, which is why it's called a ring modulator. Ring, yeah. But that is the, the basic difference between the two is a really fast tremolo, you'll still get a fundamental note. Yeah. But in a ring mod, you've got to tune it to a note that you like. Yeah. But if you you know you can tune it outside that and you you can literally have nothing left of the note that you play. Yeah. And what you get is the sum and the difference of those two waves, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Which is why it sounds so discordant and odd. Okay. If you want to know more on that, just there's a bunch of really great videos online that you can watch that'll explain it in in detail with graphs and stuff. Uh, we we might venture that far or we might not. But that's what creates that otherworldly thing. And as you say, with the clean signal gone, with the dry through signal of your guitar gone, mm -hmm. all you get is those noises. So am I right in saying then, with the blend at 100% on the frequency analyzer, it wouldn't matter what I play, pretty much I'd get the same note? No. It's still, so your note is the, the carrier. Input. No, uh, your no, your note is the input or the modulator. Right. The carrier is the is the wave that's got the frequency on it. Right. Let's that constant that thing. So if we blend it all the way around there. Yeah. I don't know if that's the fine tune. Oh, it is blend all the way around there. Yep. Um, I'm just going to play a bunch of notes that will start down here low and end up here high, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> So when we talk about the sum and difference, <laughs> it's the sum and difference of the note that's going in, the note that you play, yeah. and the carrier, the the the, yeah. the sine wave, the sine wave in that. And so when it when the when your note hits that carrier signal, it goes, okay, what is that frequency? I'm going to add that frequency to yeah. the frequency of the carrier. And then I'm also going to take, take the frequency away. away. Yeah, yeah. And then you get those two notes. So once you get into the synth world, um, deriving your own waveform yeah. is is where it starts Changing to get the envelope and all that stuff. Yeah, 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 synthesis, and that's 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 where we are. All right. Um, having uh, briefly covered that then, let's go through the three of them uh, fairly quickly, just highlight the features, and then we'll get Dougie in and... Um, <laughs> okay, so the most traditional is the frequency analyzer. Now, because of that thing we were saying before about with it all the way up, you don't have any fundamental left, mm. there's the blend control on there. Yeah. All right. So if we, if you just grab a, you know, an OD sound that you like, and then we'll put this on 100% dry, yeah. then I'll start to blend that in. And then I'll pick a key center, let's say A, and then Dan will also tune it so that it's uh, harmony with A and dissonant with A. Fabulous. Yeah. Yep. An overdrive sound I like then. Yep.
So, and but being able to tune it to the key or the note that you're in is so important. It's sort of less stabby and more stabby, isn't it? Yeah, is where it leaves you. But because you can, yeah, because you can dial that fundamental in as well. You can have actually have it quite subtle. Yeah. And it becomes like if we do it with a fuzz. <laughs> subtle. <laughs> yeah. So play the same thing, and then we'll do it with a fuzz, which okay. is a lot more broken up. Yeah. And it, the tricky thing is with fuzz because there's so much less fundamental. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's exactly that. So it's you know it's it's got to it take what it takes what it can get. Yeah. Um, so here we go. So here's the fuzz. <laughs> We're going to keep playing that, but we're going to do the Tony Iommi trick. Okay. We're going to send. We're going to send the fuzz into the Marshall. If only I had a Gibson SG, Dan. If you only had a Gibson SG. <laughs> so we're going to go back to where you were. Yeah. Right. But then we're going to split it. We're going to send the fuzz into the Marshall. Yeah. And the and the ring modulator into, into the, fender. the Fender. Oh wow! This will give me an interesting mixing job. <laughs> as rock as a tree I'm afraid so the difference there being of course if we um, because we've got the fuzz going into the ring mod it's got more level right yeah. so let's just I just want to do that again and just the ring mod into both amps yeah. and then split it and hear the fuzz into one amp and the ring mod into the other okay Okay. so just play this put it on 100% let me get more fuzz drift yeah turn it up give it some love But you can hear, because it's doing the sum and difference and creating other tones, it's almost, because you've got it tuned to a frequency that's all, you know in the same key, you can get harmonies. Yeah, yeah. It's really that's cool. what put Jessica in mind. Exactly. Right. There you go. And all the Allman Brothers fans out there going... So that's the frequency analyzer. Um, the next one to have a look at is the DOD. So what was cool about this one, it, it has a built-in distortion circuit okay. in it. Um, so go for it, mate. You love a play. All right. So that's the frequency.
actually a pretty decent distortion pedal just on its own, isn't it? that you play angular atonal awesomeness well I don't know about awesomeness but yeah it's, in my head it's awesome yeah I, I think because a lot of the times I mean it's impossible to tune it to a point where everything you play even in the same diatonic mm. key it's kind of not the point though is it that's exactly that yeah so it is going to create tension yeah you know <laughs> Or then, so uh, that's the gonculator, and so, then this is the um, Fairfield Randy's Revenge. I like to think it's named after Randy from South Park. Okay. Yeah, we don't actually know why it's called Randy's Revenge. I'm sure it's online somewhere. Um, I did get the manual out, Dan, just so that uh, we don't get anything too wrong. Okay. Um, I suppose the things to explain are the high-low switch, um, which is... Uh, what's the high-low switch, Dan? It changes the uh, yeah. the speed of the frequency. So operating range of the VCO. There you go. The voltage uh, voltage controlled oscillator. Yeah, great. So uh, 0.5 to 45 hertz, high for 18 hertz to 2.4 kilohertz. Frequency control selects the oscillator's rate uh, and the shape of the waveform sent to the analog multiplier. Mm -hmm is with the square and uh, psi, so, so the square wave and the sine wave. wave. So there's two different wave, uh, two different waveform shapes. Yeah. So we've got two ranges of the uh, of the, the operating range yep. of the VCO, yep. and then two wave shapes. The rest of it should be fairly straightforward. In addition, the Randy's Revenge also has um, expression pedal control, yeah. which is done with control voltage. Yeah. Uh, well, it says CV, CVJ. Okay, there you yeah, go. Yeah. Yes, great. So now, because we've got that plugged in, I, I think that overrides the frequency control. Oh, okay. Yeah, oscillate is frequency, and uh, there are some there are some other switches inside the pedal which you can mess about with if you want. Um, the other thing we didn't talk about on the frequency analyzer was the low-pass filter, which I assume is a low-pass filter, the switch on the top here. Oh, yes. Which yes. makes it really, really bassy or yeah, not. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, this... Um, it has a... Yeah. Here we go. The low-pass filter there. So it's got it on a knob rather than a switchy, switchy. A switchy switch. Okay. Uh, Daniel, I think you're in charge. Okay. Um, you can you can be my... Uh, I'll be your... Yeah, on the, on the floor. Oh, here you go. I'll show you. We've got one of these. Look. Go for it, Dan. playing a continuous note yep it wasn't i thought it was doing a delay for a second no no so you're on a square wave yeah and that's the tremolo that's the so it's cutting it in and out exactly ah right okay. so that's the that, if you now if you go onto a sine wave it'll be like a tremolo. okay sorry i just needed to check what i was hearing there Come on, then. Thank you. 
The obvious question. That is wicked, man. It is, it is great. It's great fun. But the obvious question is, how do you make music with that? You know what I mean? Well, well, we'll make some noise in a minute. So just before we do that, what is killer about the Randy's Revenge is that you can use it as an ersatz tremolo. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. And then by the reason I was struggling with the um, expression pedal, well, you can probably see it in the main camera, was because the range of travel... I'm sure you can configure all of this, but the range of travel is literally like yeah. that much of the expression Millimeters. pedals. Millimeters. Travel, so it's quite hard to do. It'd be all right to do when we stood up, but sat down, not so much. Um, yeah, and the high-low switch too. Yeah. So it can act kind of like a tremolo in the lower ranges. Yep. Yeah. And then much more aggressive ring mod in the upper ranges. Sure. And of course, you've got the mix control here as well. Yeah, yeah. So you can do you know the same thing with the others. The mix control is... It's absolutely essential in, in any ring mod. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> okay, finger snap. Take 69.
Did that just happen or did I dream that? <laughs> well, for a couple of middle-aged men, Dan, I think that was uh, fairly blues daddy. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. Uh, so hopefully that gave you some idea of the challenges of dropping the ring mod in there, but also just how completely out there it sounds yeah. and how arresting it is for a little bit. When we talk about dynamics a lot, and if you're building something and you want to throw something in there that just takes it to a whole other level, it is yeah. such a fantastic thing. It's great. I'm, I mean, the the power of the uh, Randy's Revenge is getting to grips. I, I tried to put the switches in the same place and use the expression pedal. When you're trying to think of something and play it, I think it's going to, some time in would... Yeah, would sure. benefit. There's something I love about the electro harmonics, just yeah, yeah, straight yeah, out yeah. the yeah. out the box. It, yeah. it it it's that sound, and yeah. maybe it's that sound because I've heard it a lot. Sure, sure. The gonky later more qualified success for me. The distortion's great. Yeah. The ring mod's noisy. Yeah. Um, but a great way to get into it. Yeah, yeah. It's cool because you can just have it sort of subtly in the background on top of an already aggressive sound. So <laughs> subtle. Subtle. <laughs> subtle. Yeah. That's uh, it. Big thanks to Dougie Fresh, of course, for. Batter in the tubs. Well done, mate. And the two random non-bass players that turned up as well. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I hope that was uh, fun. I hope you're a little bit more clued up about what's actually going on. Yeah, um, I'm not sure I am. To be fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yes, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed some merch, some T-shirts and hats and strings and pedals. It's uh, what funds a show. So massive thanks to anyone that's gone there. Thank you for doing that. Also, patreon.com slash that pedal show. Uh, if you want to support us in that way, weekly podcasts of our viewer comments and questions and monthly giveaways for Patreons on Patreon. Indeed. Preferred retailers. In the text. Indeed. Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you on Monday for viewers, comments and questions. Bye. <laughs>